Hello, everyone. This is another episode, another debate from 2debate.eu. I am Sebastian, and with me today are wonderful, our lovely, our beautiful, our pretty, our handsome, whatever you want to name it. Derek. You do that every time now, it's going to be very juicy in, in a few episodes, mm. right? Mm. I can play some suggestive music in the background while, you, while you read all your compliments to me. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today? Well, I'm still alive, or at least it's not a computer-generated voice. Although, although I have to say, I, I believe we have, we I say we Google has released a few weeks ago, new, uh, I think what it's called, WaveNet. I don't know what I'm talking about, and it's not even connected to what we're talking about today. But I guess I'm very stupid. <laughs> Come on. No, the, the, this this Come transition on. is not forced at all. Not at all. You know what? I think we should create a law that if you're saying stupid things, like you, you should go, you should you should automatically go mute. Oh my god! I would no, definitely suggest to break it's, it. It's not really a good break transition, but I, I, maybe some people out there will find it funny. Well, it's been almost a year now that I have had <laughs> uh, the the draft, the initial draft of my standard comedy, and I still a year on, ten months after, I still have not finished my draft because I realize I am not funny. Um. I do have nice stories to tell, but they're nice stories to tell like over a dinner table, maybe not in front of a of, a, of an audience. So I'm thinking, I I, uh, I need to play video games, maybe. Just rest my but mind. No, a bit. don't do that. They are a waste of time, and I would <laughs> consider banning them. How about that? Let's debate that another time. But if you missed our debate, our dear listeners, <laughs> our debate last time, last week, go back to to debate.eu. We debated about video games. Today is not about video games. It's not about banning anything. It's about breaking things. We're going to break things today. The motion is, if a law is stupid, if a law is stupid, then you should break it. I will be in favor of that motion. This is the flip of the coin. We decide randomly which side we're on. And Dirk, you but will I, be against. I think it fits you, the outlaw here in our little podcast. So. Well, what makes you say that? I'm I I'm a law-abiding citizen, <laughs> mostly. Well, uh, yeah, I will admit things though. I mean, you're not shaved right now. You're you're. Oh come on! Uh, I shaved two days ago. That counts. I shave once a week, <laughs> once a month. <laughs> anyway, so uh, not going into any depth how much of an outlaw you really are. We will see in our debate. Um, I go first, and I'm against breaking the law. That. Uh, Boring. No, it's not. Okay, let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues against the motion. So this is a bit of a hard motion to debate on because we will be in quite abstract territory very quickly, at least from my end. So if you're you're scared of abstract and philosophy, maybe just just agree to Sebastian here. Um, because, you know, when we debate if we breaking the law is acceptable, we should also ask ourselves the obvious follow-up question. What if everybody does it? Now you may say, but we break only the stupid laws. But the truth is, I doubt there is a consensus what is stupid and what not. And to, well, follow Sebastian's argument that he made multiple times, I'm not sure everybody is equally smart. <laughs> And some people may be utterly stupid, so I'm not sure if we can trust their judgment. So if we allow the premise that stupid laws are allowed to be broken, then we have to accept that a lot of laws may be broken because someone thinks they are stupid. And that, my friends, is a scary, slippery slope because in the end it means that we kiss our modern, safely guarded, regulated society goodbye. The core promise of a nation-state, no matter the system, is that there are rules and that those rules are followed and that there is a process how to create and change these rules. Following these rules is essential because if we do not see the point in following them, then everything else falls apart as well. So coming full circle, if you think a law is stupid, then you need to follow the process of changing it. That may include protest and other means of fighting it, or you Trust the large electoral system, if you like, but just breaking the law because you decided it is stupid bears the risk that you overlook that there is a larger sense. And secondly, if everyone did, the whole idea of laws is dead. Sebastian argues for the motion. 
a few years ago, just a few years ago, women in France were not allowed to wear trousers. It was illegal because of a law of, the, I think, the 19th century or the early 20th century. Yes, it was illegal for women to wear trousers. Uh, I think some laws are quite stupid for the simple reason they have become obsolete with the passing of time. Another absurd example, a village or a town in California does not allow you, it's illegal to build, maintain, or use a nuclear weapon within the city limits. It's an actual law. Uh, it was part as an anti-nuke, anti-nuclear weapon statement, and it, take, it took a second life as a joke. So I want to clarify one thing here. When I say you should break the law, it doesn't mean you should do it every single time or when you risk putting lives in danger, including your own. But let's not also forget that the law often leaves room for interpretation. There's so-called gray areas in, uh, when it comes to legal matters. So it may look as if you're technically breaking the law, but in fact, you're in that gray area that has not been explored before. Let me give an example. The whole debate we're having at the moment in Europe about the rights and subsequent payment of blinking to news articles with articles 11 and 13 that are debated in the EU. And that was technically not possible to explore before because the internet did not exist back then and there was no specific law that addressed that aspect. So technically, you could be breaking the law without realizing it or because there's just not no law defining that aspect. I have broken the law in the past when I have watched films that were otherwise not available in the country I was living in. In this case, the law was stupid because the law was preventing me from enjoying things that were otherwise not accessible in the country, not because it was censored, just because the distribution channels were not in place. Am I proud of it? That's beyond the point. I'm not proud of breaking the law, but I want to have access to the content. So there are absurd laws. There are laws which are not into effect or not prepared yet because the landscape has evolved. And also in some cases, there's no other choice but to break the law. I'll have more examples which are more radical in my three-minute piece afterwards. But this is why, if a law is stupid, you should certainly feel comfortable breaking it. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his rebuttal. You gave me such a nice set of examples to dig in. So let's pick the first one. The anti-nuke law. Pretty stupid, I agree. So you suggest breaking it now? And building a, a nuke in within city limits? Or what is the suggestion that you have? Because the premise of that law was to protect people and to avoid people building nuclear weapons and to criminalize those who try. And in these times, uh, there are people that indeed try to have some form of nuclear material built into bombs, so-called dirty bombs, for instance. But I'm pretty sure there is a spectrum what falls into a nuclear weapon in that case. And it may still be applicable. Now, the other example you gave, downloading material illegally because you insist on your right to have access to it. And because you have no access to it, you feel like you can take matters in your own hand and download it. And uh, this is a stupid law. Well, I beg to differ. I'm pretty sure there's a legal way to have it. There are people actually making a living out of proper license fees being paid. And if it's not available in Europe yet, then there is there is a procedure. And the media that you just downloaded because you wanted to have access to, you actually pirated it, not contributing to it. And just by declaring, oh, this law is clearly stupid. Now I have a right to, to break it. That is like me walking out on the street and saying, it's stupid that I don't, uh, I'm not allowed to steal any car that I see here. Now I take the, the Porsche over there and drive away. Who is making that call? You? You decide that something is stupid and therefore you are allowed to break the uh, law? Coming back to my little intro speech earlier, this is exactly the problem. Everybody would decide differently. Clearly, those working in media departments and working in the movie industry wouldn't agree with your assessment that it's stupid to force the sector to actually pay fees before they release movies. Some laws are actually designed to protect lives, even if you don't realize it. For instance, it may feel stupid that there are certain areas where you're not allowed to go until you learn that somebody died there and uh, therefore areas are restricted from public access. 
still people decide that it's stupid to be restricted from walking this and that place and just walk there anyway and uh, some of them are dead afterwards so i would say you're a really bad judge on what constitutes stupidity in laws thank god there are not that many laws out there that ban women from wearing trousers so these days are over so that example was an example from the very very distant past where there may even have been a reason we don't know anymore why that has been a law next up sebastian so it, it was a law from a distant past but it was still valid it was just rescinded just a few years ago but here's the thing we, we're laughing about trousers and nuclear weapons but and this is the most serious aspect homosexuality Homosexuality is still a crime in a number of countries around the world. It, it was the case in the UK until 1966, if I'm not mistaken. So by being homosexual, you're immediately breaking the law. And in that case, there's nothing you can do about it. It's not even about whether you should break it or not, because you can't even change your sexual orientation, despite what some people claim. Same-sex relations are still forbidden in Singapore. Although, thankfully, uh, this law is not as strictly enforced as some of, of the others. I would say stupid laws in Singapore, but I should be careful since I travel there from time to time. You mentioned something at the very beginning and saying, well, what if everybody does it? What if there's no consensus? Well, here's the thing. If enough people break the same law, the law actually changes. It's one way to change the law. It's not the best way. I agree with you that you, ideally we could follow the process, but sometimes it just doesn't work because possibly... The legislator, the, those in power, are too conservative. They're graying men, usually white men in Western democracies, and they're disconnected from the reality of the ground. I'll give you one typical example, consumption of cannabis. I'm not a smoker, but in most countries, it's still illegal in most countries. But something like, I think around 20%, at least, of the population has had at least once a try at cannabis, um, or maybe even more than just once. And this is why the police most often does not fine nor arrest anyone, although they should if they were respecting the law, unless you're sending huge quantities, but that's not the majority. And eventually the law is changing. Look at Canada, look at the number of US states which have legalized the consumption of cannabis. And I can bet you, I can bet you a number of European countries will follow suit in the coming years. So yes, the law is stupid. It's not adapting to the normal, to the norm of today's society. So you should feel comfortable breaking it. And eventually enough people will break it and there'll be no other choice for, but for the parliament to change the law. It's, it's strange. It's awkward. It's not an usual process, democratic process, but it is one way. It's never easy to do the right thing. I agree with you. But it's, in this case, a moral imperative from a philosophical standpoint. So overall, I will claim that if a law is stupid, then you should indeed completely feel comfortable breaking it. doesn't mean you have to do it to endanger yourself. For instance, as I mentioned in the serious case of being a homosexual, there's no reason to advertise openly that you are homosexual if you risk your life because of it. But you should, there's nothing you can do but break the law because of what you are, of who you are. Final statements. Dirk, let's hear it. You put quite a lot of things on the same footing. You put wearing trousers, pirating movies, and being a homosexual on the same level where they clearly are not. Laws against homosexuality are not stupid. They are immoral. Laws against homosexuality are laws you need to rally against, protest against, and then breaking that law may become an act of protest. And I agree with you, maybe that's what you should do. But I make a subtle yet really important difference between just making a judgment call for yourself, something is stupid, therefore I'm breaking it, and something is wrong, therefore I'm breaking it. I would say even people that are not touched by a law against homosexuality should run against it. The same is not true for many of the other laws. Um, I personally don't care if there is a law against uh, building nukes within the city limits. Yes, stupid, I don't care. And I'm certainly not planning on breaking it. And overall, I maintain breaking laws just because you decide that's a law to be broken is the first step to basically kill the basis of uh, how we structure our social life and our, our modern societies. So no. You shouldn't break it just because you think it's stupid. Then you should fight against it, run against it, 
trust the process to change it. Sebastian. Some laws make no sense for many, many different reasons, whether they're obsolete, whether they're absurd, whether they're not evolving with society at the pace it is evolving, whether we like it or not, by the way. And it should be. It should be. It not always is fairly obvious what law can be broken and what law is kind of a great area whether you can break or not. But sometimes there is no other way. Protests are not always an option. It's mostly illegal in Singapore and in most countries around the world. It's very difficult to do a public demonstration and not be beaten up by the police or by some paramilitary group. We're talking about the majority of the countries around the planet. And if it's not obvious, then which law you can break, then very likely you'll be very quickly isolated or you'll find no one who shares your opinion. So I think you'll get a sense of whether it's something like cannabis, which most people, I'm not saying the majority, but a large proportion of the population is actually using, despite it being illegal, or whether you're doing something like murdering people, like the New Zealand attack uh, of the mosque, which is clearly something which is extremely rare and extremely moral by a a number of people, a number of standards for most people. So I think if a law is stupid, not just because you alone think it's stupid, but because you can see there's momentum, you can see your friends and other people and other groups of the population are believing that this particular law is stupid, then you should feel at ease to break it. You don't have to do it, but you should break it if you want to. That's a difficult one. It is. You're basically calling out to break the law. Civil disobedience. Yes, but that's a form of protest. So that's what I tried to, to say in my final statement. I say there is a there is a thin line between disobeying the law because you protest against it or just feeling like, oh yeah, I don't need to pay my taxes because it's stupid to pay taxes anyway. And I do I do think there's a difference between you breaking the law in your your private and not observable life and you noticing that there are a group of there is a group of people agreeing with you on the grounds that the law is stupid and should be not in place and therefore you're all breaking the law knowing that you break the law intentionally so that as i said civil civil disobedience is a form of protest maybe in countries like singapore the only way of uh, really protesting in that sense because you don't want to be beaten up uh no, I don't disagree, but how is that contradict- contradictory with what I said? You just call breaking laws because you think they're stupid. And I would say most of us are not knowledgeable and aware enough to really make that judgment call in all cases. And just because we believe something is stupid doesn't mean it really is. So some form of trust into the system and following the rules is required in order for modern societies to function. And I would be careful just to break laws because I think they are stupid. And this is a difference to having a moral or informed opinion about the law and breaking it because you you are um, of the opinion that this law needs to go away. Uh, I don't know. I think I think we're making the 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 assumption that. But uh, at least I did not want to imply that when I spoke about looking at what other people are doing. I think I think you're thinking in your own conscience whether you want to abide by a specific law or not. And then you, you turn out you, it turns out that you realize that indeed others are breaking the law or not. In the case of cannabis, for instance, I think I, I believe that you're mostly driven by your by by your environment and your own desires to actually experience cannabis. Oh, and you realize by the way that many people are doing the same thing. You're not trying cannabis just because millions of people are doing the same thing. So I don't think you're waiting for, for validation from a number of yeah. people. You're just breaking the law but, uh, because it suits you. But then if you're in the, in the, if you're in the extreme minority of not paying your taxes, you'll be in trouble. Whereas if enough people do not pay taxes, it could actually highlight a problem such as, well, maybe the country is corrupt. Maybe you pay taxes to a corrupt regime. And it actually makes sense not to pay taxes in that case. Or the system needs to be reformed. No more income tax. You just tax corporations. Yeah, but I, I do yep. think... Uh, 
Let's take another example. We can come up with plenty of examples, but the examples I came uh, that came up to me is uh, if you if you drive drunk, then you will quickly realize plenty of people drive drunk, even though it's illegal. I don't think you could draw the conclusion that this therefore calls for breaking that law because it's stupid, even though there are plenty of people that clearly think the law is stupid and they are perfectly capable to drive drunk. But the, the law is designed to protect others from the stupidity of people. So that's a good point. That's a good point. So I, I guess I would extend what I said at the beginning in terms of break the law if it doesn't harm you or others. Remember, I said, like, don't like you can break it, but don't break it if it's going to harm you physically. But you can extend this to the point of saying don't harm others. I'm fine with that. If you're smoking cannabis in your apartment, you're breaking the law, but you're not harming anyone else. Agreed. Directly. Agreed. Um, if you don't, and same with alcohol, right? You can drink alcohol and if you drive in a parking lot with no other car, fine by me. Don't I, care. I mean, the, the whole point of people who would call for a, a ban of cannabis and basically say it's good to have a ban and laws against it, they would tell you... Uh, by legalizing cannabis, you create a market. That market um, creates, therefore, demand because yes. availability of cannabis makes it more likely that people start consuming it. And there are people that legitimately believe that cannabis leads to further drug addiction. Now, we can we had a debate on this. We can have a further debate whether or not that is true. But the, the fact of the matter is, I actually don't know. You neither. Neither of us is really an expert. And even the experts disagree on this. But the law is designed to prevent that very effect. So uh, is, is this then on us to decide, oh, it's stupid, therefore, because I want to smoke weed now? I, I'm not completely sure this is really a, a, a call I should make as a citizen. But anyway, this that's is why what we have the debate. Yes, yeah. and we don't have to agree. Indeed. And that's it. That wraps up our debate. Another one in the box. Uh, thank you for debating. And uh, I guess that's, uh, that's a wrap. Thank but you. Yeah, hey. And uh, right. you can go back to your outlaw life, and I, I am the law-abiding citizen that I. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <was>. yeah. <laughs> right. All right. All right. Thank you, and bye bye. How are you doing today? Uh well, I'm sweating after our, we just recorded another debate just before. Now you exposed that oh. I'm asking you, how are you doing today? And actually, we know that uh, we are doing fine. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs>